mismas. I was at the mall with my family and we were walking down the middle. And we were noticing those kiosks. Have you seen these before? Because there isn't enough stuff for sale at the mall. So there have to be these kiosks on wheels where they can sell more stuff. And we're noticing this one kiosk in particular because it has every sort of gadget and toy and contraption you can imagine in every color under the sun. And we notice that they're selling this, this sports ball toy apparatus thing, and the salesperson says, would, would you like to try it? And I was like, sure. So he straps this thing to my wrist that's connected to like this elastic cord that's connected to a ball. And the purpose, they tell me, is you're supposed to take it and throw it, and then it goes out and it comes back and you catch it. And so, of course, I take it and I just chuck it, and it comes back and it hits me in the face. And I turn, I turn to my son, and I'm like, hey, do you want to try it? And he's like, no. It's like he sees dad making a fool of himself. And the salesperson is like chattering away about how people use this as a stress reliever. My wife and I are like laughing, and we just walk away, yeah, whatever. But my son, he stands there, and he says, I want one. And we're like, no, 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 we're, we're leaving. We're going. And he's like, but, but I want one. Like, no, it's got like this cord, it's got this strap thing, it'd get all like tangled. No, no, we, we gotta go. He's like, no, but, but I want one. Now, uh, a couple weeks before this, we had been at this school near our house. On the playground, somebody had left some kickballs, probably from recess or something. And so we had been uh, throwing and kicking around these kickballs with my boys. And my wife and I had commented on how we ought to go get the boys a kickball. I mean, everybody needs a kickball, right? And so earlier that day, earlier that day, we had decided, you know, after we leave the mall, let's go across the street to the sporting goods store and let's get the boys a kickball. But right now my son is standing there at the kiosk saying, I want one, I want one. And by now my wife and I have probably walked 50 feet down the mall from the kiosk. And my son is standing there and he looks up at what to him is this massive wall of toys. And he says, but I need it. And so me, in a moment of sheer parental brilliance, decide that I'm going to reason with a two and a half year old from 50 feet away. So I start laying out my case, like you don't understand, it's gonna get wrapped around your wrist, it's not gonna work, it's gonna break, it's gonna fly, it's gonna hit you, it's not gonna, be... and he just looks at me with this look, maybe you've seen this before, he looks at me with this look like, like but I thought you said you loved me. <laughs> I'm like, don't do this to me. And I'm sure the salesperson is thinking, like, tightwad, dad, like, loosen up. It's like seven bucks, and your kid's having a breakdown here. So I have to walk all the way back, and under great protest, I have to pick him up and carry him out to the car. Feel me, don't talk, and don't rush this walk with me. And so we enter the sporting goods store. And my radar is up and I locate the sports ball section. And there are basketballs and footballs and soccer balls. And eventually we come to the kickball aisle. And the kickballs are stacked there, red and blue and yellow and green. And there's the smell of fresh rubber in the air. You know what I'm talking about. It's that smell of a good new kickball before it's broken in. And so we take our son up to the wall of kickballs, and he stands there and he looks up. And with great joy, I say to him, take your pick. And his eyes get big, and he points, and he says, the orange one. 
And so with great joy, I take the orange one down off the shelf and I hand it to him. Here you are, my son, with whom I am well pleased. And then I say, shall we take a march of triumph, a victory lap, if you will. And so the Bell family, with my son holding the kickball in front of him, patting it, saying, the orange one, the orange one, we take a march of triumph through the sporting goods store, out of our way, for my son has an orange kickball. But the point isn't the kickball, is it? I mean, what if, like, what if that was my goal for my kids, that they had more things and better things? That's not the point, more stuff. No, the joy for me, the point for me, is in my relationship with my boys. It's in our interactions, in our connection. The joy for me is when we talk about the things that matter to us. So my kids, they ask me for stuff all the time, and I love to give them what they want. But I don't always. Sometimes I say no. It's not because I'm like cruel or mean or anything, but it's because their perspective's limited. There's stuff they don't see that I see. There's stuff they're unaware of. I mean, what if they actually got everything they asked for right when they asked for it? Some of the stuff they ask for would make them miserable. Other things might be great someday, but just not now. And so I say no. And so sometimes they give me this, I thought you loved me look. And I'm left saying, well, you just, you, you, gotta, you gotta trust me on this. Come here, buddy. Come here. See, I could create this safe little bubble of a world for them where they always get everything they want right when they asked for it, when they were protected from everything. But it wouldn't be much of a life, would it? Sometimes we ask God for things, and then when we don't get them, and God doesn't deliver, we think that there must be something wrong with God. Or maybe you've been asking God for something for a while, and you still don't have it. And your question is like, how long? How long do I have to wait for this? When is God gonna deliver? And maybe God's perspective is how long? How long till you see that there's a bigger perspective here? Or maybe you're like me, sometimes you have the sense of God, if you just give me this, then I'd be okay. Then my life would be okay. You can fill in the blank, whatever your this is. God, if you just give me this, then everything would be okay. And, and God's like, no, it wouldn't. Or maybe you have this sense of God, if you just give me this, then I'd be happy. And maybe God's like, no you wouldn't be happy. They'd get all wrapped around your wrist and it'd hit you in the face and it would, it just wouldn't, you wouldn't enjoy it. We often have our own ideas of what would be better, don't we? And so we expect God to agree with our idea of what would be better, but God's idea of better is better, isn't it? Now, I don't know why there's so much pain and confusion in life. I don't know how God can stand it. But I do know the question is, do I believe that God is good? I mean, do you, deep in your bones, what do you really believe God is like? Because until we each deal with this question, then nothing's ever gonna make any sense, is it? And Jesus said, who of you, if his son asks for bread, would give him stone, or if his son asks for a fish, would give him a snake. If you, and you're human, you're flesh and blood, you're flawed, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? So when you find yourself standing at the kiosk, asking why can't I have what I want? May you believe that God is good and that across the street, He has something better.